Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. Well, I'm trying something new tonight, and I think I'm going to like it. I have my camera and everything on this side today. On the left side, I don't know, it's really weird. I'm used to looking on the right side, so... Alright, well, I hope you had an awesome day. At least with things set up like this, I can see whether this is still recording or not. And so that's helpful. The only thing is, I don't know how that's going to work with my Facebook that I had open. Huh. Yeah, that's not going to work. Because I need the other side. Alright, well we're going to do a little switcheroo real quick. So sorry for the disruption. That was pretty easily fixed. Now I gotta drag my this back over. Alright. There we are. Now yeah, we're working. Yeah, not really. Not really. Okay. Alright. I need to pull that. Well, I need it to where I can read it. Electronics are so fun when they work great. I don't think that's going to work great. We'll see. I'll keep pulling it. I need to be able to read all that. I need to be able to read what I wrote on Facebook. Let's see if I can. Alright, so tonight, as you can tell on my little promo, I guess that's a promo. I don't know what it is. Um, tonight is uh, good versus evil and who wins who wins in that as Christians I think we know the answer to that but the thing is that um, part of what I'm doing is sharing God's truth and the gospel with G of Jesus and so not everyone knows not everyone knows the truth because not everyone reads God's Word so we're going to look up some scriptures tonight, and I'm sorry, but we're going to be winging it again because I didn't have a chance to come in here and look and see what fit best with the lesson. So we're just going to pray for the Holy Spirit to lead us in that <laughs> because I always need the Holy Spirit to help me. Okay, so I have happy birthday on my YouTube video, and it is not my birthday, but you know what? It is my birthday month, so my birthday is coming on Saturday. I probably won't be here on Saturday. I don't know. I haven't decided what I want to do yet for my birthday. I know I got me some um, cordless earbuds that are going to work with the phone. The phone that I don't have in here anymore because I keep forgetting it in the dining room. Okay, so I guess no music again tonight. Unless I just decide to get up and go get some music. But what do you think about good versus evil? I mean, it seems like we are in this very, very intense spiritual warfare right now. And... I feel it every day. I get up. I feel it every day. I myself pray on the full armor of God every day. And when I don't pray on the full armor of God, I can definitely tell the difference. So I would like to invite you to pray on the full armor of God every day in Ephesians 6. And I actually pulled up something on the internet that um, gives me more to pray than just the just the pieces of armor. It gives me something else to identify it with. So I really enjoy that. Well, I am going to jump into prayer, and I may go get my music. Um, I really would like to listen to some music tonight, and I can't I can't do it. I can't let it play in the background, which is how I started out. But then they would mute my videos because I didn't have permission to use that music. Well, if I have it in my ear, then, you know, 
Um, I'm not listening to anyone's music that's not, you know, given permission for it to be on YouTube. So, anyway, I'm going to be right back. I like to fix that. That's very soft. <laughs> My little blanket. Okay, well I'm back. So sorry. And I got this too. Just my old LG that I used to have. And so I'm going to listen to some music while I talk to you about good versus evil tonight. So if you have any thoughts about that, please put it in the comments. If you, if you feel this spiritual battle that we're in like I do, then put it in the comments. Oh, looky there. My phone thing. My phone thing will hold up my paper. That's just too cool. All right. All right. Okay, well, let's pray. Let's pray. God, we just come to you, and uh, we are so thankful, God, that you are sovereign and that you are in control. We are, uh, we just want to humble ourselves in front of you, God. We just want to, we just want you to open up our hearts and our minds to what you want to teach us tonight, because every time that I do this, I'm learning to. And so, even though this is a title that you gave me this morning, I had to do some investigation on it. And so, um, I'm always learning to. I have not arrived. You know that so well, God. God, we just thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our protector, and our provider, and for being our shelter in the storm, God. You are where we can run when we don't understand life, God. You always have an encouraging word for us. You always pick us up where we are, God. And you just uh, tend to what we need. And that's what you did with me this morning, God. Because I was so, I don't know, distraught. I was distraught, God. And you gave me the encouragement that I needed. God, you are mighty and magnificent and powerful, but yet you are kind and compassionate and loving and so patient, God. You are faithful. You keep your promises, God, every one of them. You keep your prophecies, every one, God. There is nothing in your word that is not true and um, does not cut to the heart. God, we just praise you and thank you for all the many things that you do for us every day. God, please send the Holy Spirit to help me with this lesson that he will guide me where I need to go and he will give me the words to say, God. God, we pray for the sick. We just pray that you would um, heal their bodies. And we pray for the, the men that we're in the motorcycle accident, God, that you will help them recover quickly, that you will be with them, God, and that they will know your presence, and that they will they will be drawn to you during this time of recovery. We pray for their families also. We pray, God, for all the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would soften their hearts, God, that you would allow them to be drawn to Jesus for salvation by the Holy Spirit. We pray for the prodigals, God, the ones that have walked away, the ones that have decided to go their own way, God. Aside from what you want for them, we just pray that they would return, God, that they would um, repent of their sins, that they would um, see you reconcile their relationship and restore it also, God. 
We pray for all the disasters, God. I don't even know what happened the past two days. But God, I know that you have this whole world in your hands. And that I don't have to know what's going on. I just have to trust you. We just have to trust you with all things, God. We just have to share your truths, God. And what you do with it and what people do with the information, God, is between you and them. You are the only ones that one that can change hearts. You are the only one that can change minds, God. Help us to remember that. Help us also to keep sharing the gospel of Jesus to everyone that we come in contact with. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, well, my pray and share warriors, I love the happy birthday thing. It's not my birthday. <laughs> But this is something that many, many of you do not know about me, but many, many of my friends do. I celebrate all month. I start on the 1st of April, and I celebrate until the 30th. And all you have to do is ask my husband, because there have been times that I wanted to do something on the 30th, and he would go, no, and I'd go, well, it's still my birthday month. I think you should, you know, I think we should do that. So anyway that is me that is how I am that is who God made me to be oh this is down to 2% that is annoying well I think my phone is more than 2% so I'm just going to steal that I think I have another one of those somewhere in here but I probably carried it off somewhere. Oh, here's one. I have to have to choose my fan, or <laughs> have to choose something else. Okay, well, let me check my phone and see how much battery I have. Oh yeah, we're good. We're good on the phone, so we will work on charging this up so that I can have music. Okay. So good versus evil. I think maybe we ought to take this back to Genesis, back to the garden. Maybe start in the garden with good versus evil because that was the first encounter, I think, that mankind had with evil was in the garden. So let's go back to the garden because that's where it started. That is where our fallen world started because had this not happened, I believe that we would have, um, things would have been a whole lot better. But the thing is, we have free will. And that's what happens when you have free will. Sometimes you make the wrong decisions. Sometimes we want to go our own way. We don't want to go the way that God wants us to go. And so with the going your own way, there's lots of consequences. There's brokenness. There's heartache. There's all kinds of things that go with that. And people don't realize that. Just like, let's read all of the fall of man in Genesis 3. Because Adam and Eve were good. Everything was perfect in the garden. Everything was perfect in the garden. And then the enemy came. Along Caden the enemy sneaking in. Sneaking in, deceiving, lying. Just like he does right now. Just like today. We have that same evil among us now that lies, deceives, um, causes people to fall to his evil ways. Tells people that, you know, they don't have, that they can be their own God. And we see a lot of that right now. We see a lot of people that are just like, they're following their own way. And they, they are saying, God loves me even in my sin and he does love us in our sin he does he doesn't love us any less when we're in our sin than he does when we're not however we don't have that close relationship with him that we do 
when we're following in his ways. We don't get the blessings that we do when we're following in his ways and we're being obedient to what he wants us to do. Okay, so let's read the fall of man. We may do a two-part series on this because I think with a little research I can come up with some more things. Okay, so this is where the Holy Spirit brought me, is to the garden. This is where the evil started. This is where the good began. This is where creation began and all of perfection began. Where God created man, where God created woman. He created one man, one woman for them to be together. Okay? So, let's read. Let's first read about when God created man and woman. So, in Genesis 1, 26, wow, it says, And God said, Let us make man, let us, let us make man in our image. Jesus and the Holy Spirit were there at creation. Let us make man in our own in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. In other words, mankind rules over the animals. Mankind is to rule over the animals. The animals are not to rule over mankind. God did not create it that way. He created for mankind to have dominion over the fish, over the fowl, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So he created one man, one woman to be together. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. And replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish over the sea over the fowl over the air and over every living thing that moveth, moveth upon the earth and God said behold I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, 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 good. We're still in the good. We haven't gotten to the evil. We're still in the good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So God created man on the sixth day and uh, gave him dominion over the animals. Okay? All right. And I think I'm going to read two also because it talks more about um, it talks more sorry it talks more about man and woman and it talks more about the trees in the garden and you know we may just do good tonight and we may do evil and who wins I don't know. I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking. Because like I said, I'm not real prepared for this. I had an idea. I found the verses. But then God led me here. The Holy Spirit led me here. And so... I'm not... Um, 
I apologize, but I'm not quite sure where I need to go with this. But I think I'm going to read two also. Still, in the meantime, trying to find my music. Oh, I went into my liked videos, and I'm like, what is that? I'm like, that is not music. I'm sorry. All right, here we go. I've got music, and maybe you can have my attention now. Okay, so let's read to Genesis 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. So in this goodness, in this perfection, there was no reason for rain because the water came up from the ground and watered everything so perfectly. Um, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb, oh, I already read that, sorry. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So we came from dust. We were created from dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. So he placed Adam in the garden. And out of the ground made the Lord to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So there's a tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay? I'm so glad I read this because this is perfect. There is a tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted, and it became and it became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison, that it is which compasseth the whole land of Havilah where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good, and there is delium and onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Jehon, and the same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hittichol, that is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. Assyria is Syria. The old biblical name for Assyria, for Syria, the, the country Syria, is Assyria. So when you see Assyria in the Bible, it's talking about Syria. The fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. Okay, to take care of the garden. That's what Adam's job was. He was a gardener. That was his job. He was in the most perfect setting ever of goodness. And so he was to keep the garden. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil 
thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now listen, listen very carefully what God said. This is what God said. He said, Thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Because the serpent's going to tell another story. So remember that. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. Adam named all the animals. That was Adam's job. Kept the garden, named all the animals. Had dominion over every animal in the garden. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found and help meet for him. So he was he didn't have anyone. He was the only man alive in the garden with all the animals and with God and with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And, there, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. They were not ashamed. They didn't know they were naked. They didn't know. So this, this is the relationship that a man and a woman should have, is that the man shall leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife and they shall be one flesh. Now we're going to read about the fall of man. Now the serpent was more subtle than the beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So he's questioning her. He's questioning her about what God said about the trees of the garden. The serpent knew what God said, but he's questioning her. Okay, really, what did God say about the trees of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest you die. Ye die. Okay, that is not what God told Adam. This is what God told Adam. Eve. Eve is already adding to the story. It's like the, it's like the game where you get together in a circle and you whisper things and then by the time you get to the end it's something else. She's already adding to what God said. This is what God said. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Because God doesn't say anything about touching the fruit, like, evil, like Eve said. Um, 
she she uh, shall ye touch it he didn't say anything about touching but he did say lest ye die he did say that thou shalt surely die and the serpent said unto the woman ye shall not surely die for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Wow, doesn't that sound like the same enemy that we have right now? That is trying to tell everybody that you can do whatever you want to, and you can be your own God? That is exactly, exactly what we are seeing is we are seeing these lies perpetrated by the enemy still. The serpent is our enemy. This serpent was the enemy of Adam and Eve. Uh, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat and the eyes of them both were opened and they knew they were naked see they didn't even know they were naked earlier they were just they were oblivious there wasn't any sin there was only goodness in this garden there's only good only good with this tree of good and evil and it's it's not just the tree of good and evil it is the the tree of knowledge of good and evil so they didn't even know that they were naked until they both ate of that and so they made themselves aprons and they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam, and he said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. So he's hiding he knows that he's done wrong he knows that he has sinned and so he's hiding they're both hiding and he said who told thee that thou wast naked hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat and the man said the woman <laughs> it is the woman's fault uh, we used to have so much fun with this story in our Sunday school class when I first became a Christian because we would sit there and we would blame each other, men between women, about it's your fault. No, it's your fault. <laughs> but we always want to blame somebody for our sin when it's our fault. It's our fault. We're the ones that fall to temptation. Oh, that was so funny. I just kind of lost my... Okay, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Well, you know what, Adam? You could have said no. You could have said no. <laughs> you could have said, no, Eve, that's wrong. <laughs> but he chose not to, so he's just as guilty as she is. <laughs> And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. I tell you what, he tricked her, he deceived her, and told her, Oh, you won't die, surely you won't die. Um, and the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, uh, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It will bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman that he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, 
and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten, eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins, and clothe them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is come, as one of us, to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore God sent him forth from the, from the garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turneth every way to keep away of the tree of life. So he put protection up for the tree of life. But where he said, surely thou will die, Adam and Eve could have lived forever in perfection with no sin. Oh, I, hi, hi Josie, I did have an awesome day. How was your day? So because of their sin, they had to die a death. They did not live forever. They had to die a death. They could have lived forever in perfection and all this goodness, all this goodness was for them. All this goodness was created for them. But then they fell to temptation, which is the evil. That's the evil one, is the temptation. And that's how life is. What are you doing? Oh, not right now, okay? A little bit. A little bit, yeah. Not right now. Okay. Alright, I gotta go put something else on for my son to watch. Because he's. <laughs> I'll be right back, sorry. Alright, come on. Oops. Come on, let's go. Sorry about that. I'm the only parent. I'm the only parent here. Okay. Alright. So this is just such a good story. And this, this today, I hadn't even thought about. What a good example of good and evil. What a great example of it. The fall at the garden. The fall of man. Okay, so we finish the story, and of course, from there we go into Cain and Abel, and we go into Cain, the first murder, the first murder of the Bible is Cain and Abel, and I believe that since God um, made coats of skins for Adam and Eve, 
that an animal had to be sacrificed for that. So that was probably the first sacrifice for sin. It doesn't say that, but I'm thinking that the fact that they had animal skins, somebody had to give their skins up. So I'm thinking that somebody had to die. And uh, then we have Cain and Abel. You know, that's evil. And then we go into Noah. And uh, Noah building the ark and God... I mean, it's not like chapter 3 of Genesis and then chapter 6, well, chapter 7, you know, Noah's getting in the ark with his family. And then, of course, finally it dries out and we have the covenant of the rainbow. And then we go right into the Tower of Babel where these people are building a tower and they're wanting to get to heaven so they can be like God. And so there's good and evil all in the Bible. And then you get over here in Kings and some of the Kings follow God and some of them don't. And they suffer the consequences of not following God. And then the ones that are good, the good kings that follow God, they suffer the, I mean, they, they um, are blessed by God. So, you know, really the battle of good and evil is do you want to be obedient to what God wants you to do and receive blessings? Or do you want to be disobedient and go your own way and do things your own way against what God's word says and suffer the consequences? Are there going to be blessings mixed in with the consequences? Yes. But you're going to miss out on some really awesome things in the blessings that you don't get with obedience. But I, I think that was pretty interesting. Uh, just the just the first part of Genesis and all the things that were bad and that were evil that were happening and plus the good things you know you had Noah and then you have uh, in chapter 15 of Genesis then you have God's covenant with Abraham well then you go over here a little bit farther and we're talking about Sodom and Gomorrah which was just total evil and that Abraham was bargaining with God. God, what if there are 50 people that are righteous? You know, will you spare this town? And um, get down to 10. That there are 10 people in Sodom and Gomorrah that are righteous. And the rest of the people that live there are not righteous and are doing things very much against God's word and but then when these men in Sodom and Gomorrah wanted to violate God's angels that's when you know God had had it and he destroyed he destroyed this city and so Lot and his daughters got out. And it really doesn't say, oh, he has two daughters. Okay, Lot and his two daughters got out. And um, Lot's wife turned around to look back at the city that apparently she had some attachment to. And God turned her into a pillar of salt. And you know, a lot of these things, a lot of these stories, you historically can go to these places and uh, you can see proof that this is true. That this is God's true word. I've even done some research today on, on the Bible and, you know, what what version, what English version is the closest to uh, what we have 
and um, I believe it's King James and they say I have heard that the Bible was changed in the 60s but I don't King James wasn't changed in the 60s King James has been around a lot longer than I have and I was born in 1960 so I don't know I, there's a lot of untruth out there and that's on the side of evil and then but God's Word is good God's Word is good are there some evil things in here yes there are some very evil stories in here and examples of the wrath of God that he will rain down for evil there is a consequence there is um, a price to be paid for all sin so we need to make sure that we are asking God for forgiveness of our sin asking Jesus for forgiveness that we are repenting of our sin and that we're not just we just don't keep returning to the same sin okay I want to read some of these Psalms has some really good ones about good versus evil too um, maybe it was on that second page here we are Okay, Psalms 37, 27. We're just going to look up a few of these. Then we're going to talk about who wins. Part of my deal was who wins. Well, who do you think wins? <laughs> who do you think started this? You know, God's the one that started this. He's the one that created everything. Psalms 37, 27 says... Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. So God, God is reaching out. He really, through all the things that are going on, God is reaching out to people to come to Him, come into a relationship with Him. But Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only way to enter into that relationship. Okay, let's see if we can find some more. Okay. Okay, let's read Matthew 7, 11. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. So this is the law and the prophets. So we give our children good gifts. God wants to give us good gifts too. And when we ask him, ooh, I saw the word evil, but it it doesn't really fit in the context that I want it to. So this does have Genesis on here. And out of the ground made the 
Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil and then Isaiah 520 says this I think this is the last one we're going to look at so Isaiah 520 says woe unto them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. So we are living this we are living this call evil good and good evil and darkness for light and light for darkness we're living that right now I don't know whether y'all see it right now it's parallel we, there are two parallel worlds there are words that come out of the evil that are exactly the same as what come out of the good and it has flip-flopped. Some people think that evil things are good and good things are evil because they restrict them from doing the things that they want to do. Well, that's not true. And that's what God says. Woe. Woe means to be aware, to be careful, to not, not do that. Woe. Woe unto them. So it is not good for them that do that. Um, and the people, the people that lead people away from God with deception, just like, just like the serpent did, just like Satan did in the story that we read, those people will have a very high price to pay especially leading away their innocent God's innocent children leading away the ones that are most vulnerable they will have a high price to pay unless they repent I mean, they can repent I'm not saying that God cannot forgive people for doing wrong things he can and he will we have to have a repentant heart though. We have to have a heart that wants to turn from that sin. That wants more than anything to do better than what we have been doing. You know, just like Adam and Eve knew immediately after they ate that fruit, whatever it was. They knew immediately. They knew what sin was because they were afraid of God. And up until they sinned, they had a great relationship with God. I mean, they walked and talked with God. But once they sinned, they knew that they had done wrong. They knew it was wrong. And He had told them that it was wrong. They knew going into the sin that it was wrong. Because they had been told. So they can't come back and say, Oh God, we didn't know. We didn't, nobody told us. No, nobody told us that was wrong because God told them God told Adam and apparently he told Eve or Eve wouldn't have known what to tell the serpent but sin continues and sin will continue until Jesus takes his children out of here and then sin is going to be even worse than what we see now we see it bad now but it's going to be even worse so let's read about who wins let's read about who wins who is victorious let's go to revelation wait i might want to read something in jude no i'm not even close to jude 
I really do like having my music over here. Okay. Okay, let's read Jude. Let's read Jude. It talks some more about evil. And then we'll read something good. We'll end up on a good note, I promise. Okay, so Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. So Jude is really a half-brother of Jesus, is what my... That's what my Bible says. It said Jude identifies as the brother of James, which would make him another brother of Christ. Some have suggested that Judas Iscariot, the man that betrayed Christ, is the author, but this seems unlikely. So, um, Jude was, um, was a half-brother of Jesus. So Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you and of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write to you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, we're, we're living that now. There are these men. There are these men in churches. I don't, I don't see it in our church, but in other churches, there are these men that have infiltrated. There's evil that has infiltrated our government. There's evil that has infiltrated our court systems. There's evil everywhere. Everywhere you turn, there is evil. Okay. I will therefore put you in remembrance though ye once knew this, how that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not, and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains unto dark, under darkness, under the judgment of the great day. Okay, so these angels, I believe that he's talking about, are the ones in Noah's time that left he heaven and came down and procreated with the women on the earth. And um, I believe that's who he's talking about. They are in chains under darkness. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also these filthy, these fitly dreamers, no filthy, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. I remember Cain is the one that uh, committed the first murder and ran greedily after the error of Balaam. Balaam is a false god uh, for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. I think another false god. These are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth 
without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. In Enoch also, the seventh from Adam. Now remember, Enoch didn't die. Enoch did not taste death. Enoch was translated from the earth to heaven. Uh, prophesied of these things, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. And so that is when either Jesus comes for judgment, to judge the evil, or when Jesus comes in the clouds. But I think it's for judgment. To execute judgment upon all. Yes. And to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts. Okay, walking after their own lust, going their own way, not going the word of God. Uh, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. I hear the mockers now. Where is Jesus? When is Jesus coming? I've heard that Jesus is coming for years. I don't believe that Jesus is coming. The mockers are there who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. And we see that. We see examples of that every day. In TV, in the movies, in everything, you know. Facebook. I'm, I'm not friends with any of those people, so I don't see it much on Facebook. But on YouTube, you can pull anything up on YouTube, and I mean, from something very, very good to something very, very evil, it's all within our reach. Uh, these be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto etern eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now into him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Okay, so let's, that is who's going to win, that. That description of Jesus, that is who's going to win. Evil will be defeated by... By the Lord cometh when ten thousand of saints, ten thousands of saints, to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. So there is a day of reckoning coming that Jesus will bring. So let's read, let's find something good in Revelation to end this up. That is good because Jesus is coming. Not going to read all the wrath in Revelation. And it is, it is going to be so bad. It is just going to be so bad. And I don't want anybody to be here. So let's skip to 2212. And this is, well, let's start with 7. 
This is Jesus speaking. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. Worship God. God is who deserves our worship, glory, honor, and praise. No other. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of this of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is just, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And Jesus said, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. To give every man according to his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So that's liars too. Liars too. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root of the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Come, Lord Jesus, he which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So that is the end of Revelation, and that is a wonderful way to end. And Jesus is who wins. That's who wins. And you know what? If we stay with Jesus, if we are saved through Jesus and we walk with Jesus, we win too. We overcome all evil through the blood of the Lamb. And that is Jesus Christ. And I did not do this lesson. I prayed for the Holy Spirit to lead me where He wanted me to go. And He took me back to Genesis. And we ended up in Revelation. So I feel like I feel like he gets all the credit <laughs> because I did I when I was thinking about this today I was not thinking about going back to the garden where the tree of knowledge of good and evil is and I was not thinking about ending up in Revelation I was thinking about where can I find scriptures about good versus evil and actually I believe going back to the beginning and in the end was the very best because all throughout, in between the Bible, between Genesis and Revelation, are stories of good and evil. But Jesus overcomes all evil. Evil will not survive Jesus. It won't. Jesus is going to come and reign his judgment after the tribulation. No one wants to be here for the tribulation. It is going to be the most terrific thing that anyone has ever seen. You're going to have to choose Jesus or Satan. And um, it is just easier to choose now. It's a whole lot easier to choose now and know that you're going to go to heaven. Okay, so these are the notes from my Bible study today.
Good morning, God. Good morning, child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings, child. New opportunities to share my truths in the gospel of Jesus. A new beautiful day, child. And I guess it was. I didn't step out today. I'm sure if God said it was a new beautiful day, I'm sure it was. I said, thank you, God, for a new day of mercies and blessings, of new opportunities to share your truths and the gospel of Jesus. Thank you for a new beautiful day. Thank you for all of my blessings. Last night was a nightmare that reoccurred, God. Help me to do better at leading. Help me to show them the truth and know that it is your job to change their hearts and soften them towards you instead of the ways of the world. And he said, child, this is one of the hardest generations to share the truth with. They accept the way of the world over my ways. It is your job to share and stand by my truths, and I will soften their hearts towards me. Not all will make it back to me, but that is according to my plans to and their choices. Your job is to share the truth of my word with them. And I said, I want to be the encourager that encouraged me, not the discourager when I was a teen. Help me to be that to all of these girls. Help me to counsel them in the right direction. God, I want to see them beside me and your children in heaven. I want to be the light of Jesus reflected to them. Help me to do that. And he said, Child, share my truths and let me change hearts. My word cuts to the heart. Your words are not as powerful as my words. Be more equipped next time around with my word and with the proof that my word is infallible and true. And I said, okay, God, I am not going to quit trying with this generation because I know who wants this generation and you created them for you and not our enemy. I will fight with the power of your words and not mine. I will equip myself for the battle through your word and not mine. Thank you, God, for meeting me today and every day to guide me and to help me see clearly that the battle is real and the battle lies, lines have been drawn. It is time to decide which side people are on. There is no multiple sides, but only two, good versus evil, and we know in the end who wins, and it is Jesus. I will start today and put these scriptures in my phone so I have them. I will fight this battle with your word, God. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. I said, I love you. He said, I love you too, my child. I love to watch my children grow spiritually. It makes me smile. Continue to read my word and learn from them, child. Um, Bring all of your frustrations of life to me, child. I will help you work through them. Now go, child, and rest in me. Be obedient to me in all I ask. Jesus is coming soon, so be ready. I will allow the Holy Spirit to draw people to salvation through Jesus. The reunion is soon, child. And it will be spectacular to have all my children, especially my innocent ones, Removed from the evil of the earth. And I said, Maranatha, God. So, as you can tell, the subject that I brought tonight started this morning with my quiet time. And so, I want to share, I forgot to share my Facebook thing. Okay, I want to share with you. This is really a long, this is really long tonight, but I want to share something else with you, too. And of course, always a salvation message. We may do a shorter one tonight, though. Okay, so last night we sang this song called Hallelujah for the Cross. And so, as I was standing there singing, I was reading the lyrics, and I was just really taking in what it was saying. And this is such an awesome song. I shared it on my site if you want to listen to it later. 
Uh, we sang this awesome song and message last night at Youth by Chris McClarney. As I stood there singing, I was really concentrating on every word on the lyrics. This song is amazing. I had three songs lined up. Amazing Grace, This is Amazing Grace, and this song. God chose this song. So I, as I stood there, I was thinking, where would we be today if Jesus had not gone to the cross for us? So the sacrifice that Jesus so willingly did for us bridged the gap between God and man. Jesus went to the cross to be that last blood sacrifice for all of mankind, for all of us, all seven billion-ish of us, because sometimes I hear seven billion, sometimes I hear eight billion, so I'm not sure. He paid the ultimate price for us all. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 this sacrifice for, was for all. Jesus paid it all. It is our choice whether we believe and accept Jesus as our Savior. There are so many things in our lives that are put in our lives to distract us from making this choice. There are only two paths. One leads to God and the other does not. Two paths, two final destinations for eternity. Choose the way of the cross, for it leads to our home with Jesus. This world is a battle of good versus evil. And in the spiritual war that we cannot see, it rages 24-7. Choose Jesus. He is the good path. Walk with Jesus and the teachings of God for all of your days. If Jesus is not your Savior, call upon his name and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3:16 to 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. And so I'm going to I'm going to use this to do the salvation message and then I'm going to do a prayer. I'm going to find a prayer and I'm going to do it. So so in order to accept Jesus as our Savior, we have to admit that we are sinners because we are all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. Um, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that is Romans 3.23. So we need to admit that we're a sinner. We need to ask for forgiveness. And then we need to believe that Jesus is God's one and only Son that came to save the world. Just like John 3.16 says, through his death, burial, and resurrection. And we need to confess Jesus as our Savior and Lord of, your li of our lives. And we need to invite him into our heart. Now, do we have to do all that to be saved? John 3.16 says to, to believe on Jesus to be saved. But if you're in sin, you need to get out of sin. And you need to realize what Jesus actually did for you. He died for you. He was buried for you. And he resurrected for you. To give you eternal life. And then we need to confess him as our Savior. And then we invite him in. We invite him into our life to be our Lord and the master of our life. And we try to follow his teachings. We start reading the Bible. We start reading Matthew just to learn who Jesus is. And all the Gospels, which are the accountings of what Jesus did during his ministry. You know, his ministry wasn't a long ministry. But the impact of his ministry and what he offered us by his death is tremendous and has impacted the world for many, many, many years. So I'm going to say this prayer and I'm going to leave a space where you can repeat it after me if you would like to. So maybe Happy Birthday is on my YouTube thing because it's my birthday month. It's not my birthday today, but maybe today could be your spiritual birthday. What a wonderful day. April 1st is my spiritual birthday. My spiritual birthday was May the 14th of 1991, and I have not looked back. 
I got dunked when I was 16, but you know what? It made absolutely no difference in my heart. And it didn't, it did not change my heart towards God. I continued doing exactly what I wanted to do. But when I got saved in uh, May, on May the 14th, it made a difference in my life. And I started growing, started growing in my Christianity from that day forward until today. And I still don't know everything. I will not ever know everything about the Bible or everything spiritually or about Christianity because it's a journey and we're just learning all the time. When we go to youth as leaders, we're learning too. I learn as much as they do. So I'm going to go ahead and say this prayer and then I'm going to get off of here because I've been on here for nearly an hour and a half, which is a very, very long time for me. <laughs> So, dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you are God's one and only Son. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. You were buried for three days and rose from the dead. I believe you ascended to heaven and are preparing a place for me. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and my life. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Clean my heart and help me to glorify you. In the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. music is really good that's why I'm moving I'm moving because I'm listening to music uh, I'm gonna get me some wire I got me some wireless earbuds so y'all won't be seeing my little thing hanging out anymore okay so if you said that prayer then welcome to the kingdom family of God the angels in heaven are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's book of life which is going to be open someday. And um, do read the Bible every day. Start in Matthew. Learn about Jesus. Learn about the Savior that you just accepted into your heart. And um, pray. Pray every day. Pray to God every day. And also praise. Like, I'm listening to praise music right now. <laughs> my, <laughs> my phone is still on 2% battery. It's a, it's a miracle that it's even working on 2% battery. My other phone that I'm using right now to record, uh, when it gets down to 2%, it's out of there. It's a leaving. <laughs> so, <laughs> guess in a way, this is a good phone, too, even though it had its faults. Okay. Well, uh, my friend Josie, I'm listening to Good God Almighty. Uh, that song that you showed me yesterday by David Crowder. I do want to introduce that into youth. It's a good song. I think they would like it. Because it has a good beat to it. That's why I keep moving and swaying. Because it has such a good beat. All right, well, I am going to do God's blessing for you. I am not able to bless anyone because I am not a God. So let's go to Numbers 6, 24 through 26. 
The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. We all need some peace. Hey, Josie, do you have any prayer requests? This is a... That's a charger cord, too, but I don't have any... I don't have any cords left. I have to decline my husband's call. Usually I'm done by now. Okay, well, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray to stay on the side of good. And not evil let's pray for the Holy Spirit to give us discernment to choose in between God we just come to you and we just pray God we just pray to have the discernment from the Holy Spirit to keep us from the ways of evil and to keep us on the good path with Jesus God we just pray that you would um, help us and that you would just uh, be with us that we would feel your presence god always we pray for all the many people that are sick right now and recovering from injuries god we just pray for healing for them and restoration of their bodies and god we just pray for uh, you to continue to bless us and protect us and provide for us god we thank you for those things we thank you that you are the shelter for us. We thank you that you are always with us and we know that we are never alone. And that we can come to you with our small things. We can come to you with our medium things and we can come to you with our big things. And no, matter, no matter what we come to you with, that your ears are open and that you always have encouragement for us. And a solution. My husband keeps calling me. I'll have to call him back in a minute. God, we just thank you for all the many blessings that you've given us. We just pray that you would help us to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us to make a way for salvation and for an eternal destination with you and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, the angels and all of the saints that are there before us, God. And we just pray that you would uh, bless us with a good day tomorrow and the rest of the evening. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I'm going to have to... Well, I kind of did that with the, with the injuries. That's who I was thinking of, was them. And there were other people that were in that um, accident also. So, um, anyway... I'm got to get off of here so I can talk to my husband because he keeps calling me. I'm sure he wants to know if I cooked anything. And so he's probably at his brother's and he's weighing. He's weighing what, you know, which one's best. Okay, let's pray for everyone else. God, we just pray for Josie and her family. And we pray for uh, Mr. Mike. And we pray for... All of our youth, God, we pray that they would open their hearts to your word, God. Not what we say, not what we say, but what your word says, God. And Hebrews says that your word cuts deep, like a two-edged sword, to the feeling of the heart, God. And so we pray that. We pray that your word will penetrate their hearts, God that they will see the truth, that they will see proof of you, God, that you will be very real in their lives. And we just pray, God, for all the... Um, we pray for our church and the Easter egg hunt that's coming up. We pray for... Um, just all the people in our church, God. There's so much need. There's so many things going on. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't hear me? Okay. Alright. Well, I gotta go. 
Okay, so God bless all of you and your families. Have an awesome rest of your night and awesome tomorrow, which is Friday. It's Good Friday, which is a, a sad day. Um, even though it's Good Friday, but because of Good Friday, because of what Jesus did, we have eternal life. So I guess that's where the good comes in. Um, also, uh, I should be here tomorrow night. I don't know what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, I may be talking about uh, the crucifixion. Okay, so much love and cyber hugs until I see you again. Good night.